Aha. Here's Matt. Oh, did somebody start recording already? Yes. Okay. I was just about to be sure. It is seven. Yes, it is. I'm just going to wonder what one of the only office links didn't work. Which one? Um, for the the two slides, so I'm just going to edit the agenda, okay. and I can share the screen too. Oh, that was wild. I think it linked to itself. Well, we can hope this guy will show up, but um, when do we get started anyway? Uh, we could start with addition to deletions. I put this on because uh, there was a question in my mind of whether we would want to do privilege of the floor. It's it's on the agenda unless we remove it as part of our rules of procedure. You comment, Leslie? <laughs> Why, did I look like I wanted to say something? <laughs> um, you did. <laughs> rules of procedure, I mean, that, that, that covers all meetings, not, I mean, yep. not even special meetings about a specific topic. I mean, mm -hmm. I yeah. yeah, unless we unless I guess we, we could have privilege of the floor, but um, we might decide whether we want to do it, you know, for these meetings going forward. Because it seems well, it's up to the group. I don't know. I guess we could. Mm -hmm. Well, if nobody wants to delete it tonight, we'll leave it on. And therefore, that's where we are. Does anybody want to say anything before we get into the meat of the matter here? Uh, Pat. Up, oh, you're muted, Pat. I wanted to say that I, and I should have said it before, but I wanted to thank David for his presentation on uh, a couple of weeks ago because it was ex very well done and explained um, why we definitely need to redo the 30 year old zoning ordinance that really needs to be updated. The other thing is the, the UNA designation, it was from the county and it seems like it would be useful if somebody checks with the county and lets landowners that have that designation on the property know what, how, why it's designated that way and how they can change it. It has nothing to do with the town, the designation, but it would be nice if we could help those know who they can contact at the county. Uh, and the third thing was when we look at subdivisions, um, the div divisions of the, the properties, there's a category now called suburban. Three or four times in, in discussing it, people have said that it's really the same as um, low density residential, but it's just renamed. I'm not sure why that's helpful to rename it and just leave it, but everybody has been used to using it. It doesn't seem that it conflicts with any of the other new names. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's see, Ted has his hand up. Yeah, just very simple. Although we, it's 
perfectly clear what the general subject of the meeting tonight and future meetings will be about, it kind of would be nice to have a, a, a pseudo agenda at least present on the web so that we could think about subjects that were about that were to be included that night. There is an agenda on the web. Uh, not that I found. It did not get put on the on the. Uh, did the link not it's make it to the calendar? Um, I didn't it's see not it. only it's not only not in the calendar or in the in the uh, the, the uh, click through page, but I went to the page that uh, lists all the town board agendas and whatnot. And I didn't see it there either. Huh. I, I don't see it as a big problem. I mean, <laughs> this is for your discussion, and we know generally what it's about. But it would be nice. Yes, and there and there, there there was an agenda which the board has had access to, but evidently which you have not. Uh, I not just put it in the chat if anyone wants to be able, have access to it. I think that link works. Thank you. Anyone else want to comment before we get into that short agenda? Hearing none, let's have at it. So the um, initial focus of tonight is on the on the process. And uh, David and I have spoken. I think I'm going to let him basically uh, um, handle the presentation. Great. Uh, I will share one screen. All right. So in the last town board meeting, um, I think there was some discussion about uh, some changes within how the planning group works um, in order to, I think, meet the shortened timeline that the town board expects for the zoning update. And um, it's something that Joel and I talked about, about how we can get things to the town board and to the community um, as quickly as possible uh, without a lot of extra steps. And I, I think there's a lot of value in the way that the planning group was set up and in the, the working groups that have sprung out of it. Um, but I think moving things as forward as fast as the town board wants, it may make sense to consider a different path. Um, so first I wanted to walk through this diagram uh, and this is essentially my understanding. I wasn't the planner then, but my understanding of how the um, tax uh, local law uh, or resolution to support a state law moved through this process. So the planning group set up a working group. The working group worked on something, brought it to the planning group, um, the planning group had the option of sending things back to the working group for changes. Um, and when they were comfortable with it, they moved it onto the town board who reviewed it. The town board could have sent it back to the planning group, who could have sent it back to the working group. Um, but I, I think at that point they decided they wanted to send it to the CAC and the planning board for review. Um, those boards reported back to the town board um, as did the community with comments. Um, at that point, the town board, I think, made some changes. Uh, they also could have sent it back to the planning group who could have changed it or sent it back to the working group for further changes. Um, and then eventually the town board moved to accept it. Um, with deliverables that we're trying to get out, um, not every month, but fairly close to that. Um, getting this much back and forth on each one um, would be really difficult. Um, I think the value in the planning group is the way it is set up to be open to everyone. And I think the working groups are set up in that same way. Um, so if they really function, the planning group is really the working groups in the whole as well as others. So um, what Joel and I discussed and what I'd like to present is another possibility, um, which is that the working groups, oh, Sarah. Yeah. 
uh, the working groups um, are where the work is happening. And when they have something ready to share, um, rather than going to um, the planning group before moving forward, um, send it directly to everyone, to the CAC, to the planning board, to the community and to the town board. Um, and then at the next town board meeting, have the town board receive feedback from those other groups. Um, and then the town board decides, um, do we make changes and adopt? Do we adopt as it is? Do we send it back to the working group? Um, having a shorter chain here, um, the way I hope it will work is that you'll kind of get to do a few quick circles that you know things get to from the working group to the town board and there's feedback from the planning board and the CAC and others in the community and the town board says, you know, take these recommendations working group, um, make the changes and get it back to us next month. Um, and they do and then you can move forward more quickly. Uh, the question then here is, you know, are we taking power away from the planning group um, if that's a concern? And I think because the working group is open to everyone, as is the planning group, um, I, I think it serves the same function and encourages people to go to the meetings where the work is happening rather than waiting for there to be a draft to um, respond to, to participate in the process. Um, I, I think it's worth thinking about. Um, it would enable this to move faster, um, but I think we have this time to kind of discuss uh, what concerns might be. Um, I don't think that this takes power away from the planning board and the CAC. I think it actually gives them a say earlier in the process, not to mention the fact that they are invited to the working group and we want them there. And that's the most effective way to be involved. But if people wanna wait until there's something complete to respond to, um, they certainly can. And they, they certainly still have the um, position in this, um, altered flow diagram to still have a say and respond directly to the town board. Um, so with, with that, are there questions or comments or thoughts about um, this potential change in process? I wonder if I can zoom out so you can see them both at once. Oh, cool. David, this is Matt. Hey, Matt. Um, I guess a couple things that would be helpful to me right now. Um, you talk about a compressed time to move things forward. And if one way for me to interpret that is that the working groups are really not prepared to move things forward because they don't have work to, you know, to present. Um, and I'd, I'd, be, I'd be like, I'd like to know where working groups are in the process. Uh, you know, um, I think that would be really useful for me. Um, of course, my concern has always been since the beginning of this, when we created the planning group, is that it not be some way um, that planning board members and CAC members who have been duly appointed by the board are left out of this by having created this alternate group that, you know, they just don't have the bandwidth for to do in their, in their normal, you know, activities. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that in some ways, maybe you're trying to mitigate that by speeding it up, but um, I will say that for me, I will be waiting to hear input from CAC and planning board before I would feel comfortable voting on anything. Sure. First question. Um, where the I, I, I think I can address one of your questions, which it's for later, but. Um, yeah, we're going to come up. Yeah, we're going to deal with that later. Maybe we just, I mean, I can jump over to it. Um, so 
so where where the working group is, um, you know, we really started this uh, advanced pace thing with the moratorium, and we had our April six kind of kickoff meeting, and the uh, conservation group met twice um, since then, and their task to have completed by the end of the month is identifying the new zones that will be added within the area that's currently the low density, low density residential zone um, and the purpose. And I'm, I'm pleased to say we've kind of been through two rounds of that already. So I think we've honed it down a bit and um, come up with a list of zones uh, that, that I think will work moving forward. Um, so th there's definitely progress happening Within the, within the working group, I think uh, my concern going back to the flow chart um, is we're at the point with the, the working group that we basically agreed on these zones. Um, if we follow the previous process, we would then take that to the planning group next month who would decide if they approved of it or wanted to change it. Um, if they approved of it, they would send it to the town board several weeks later, who would then send it to the CAC and planning board who meet once a month, um, who would then get back to the town board. And we, I don't think we need an adoption action on this task, but uh, you can Im imagine that just moving through that process is at least several months, a couple months. Um, so. I think if we wanna stay with that process, we just need to decide what things need to go through that, what steps in the list of things that we're gonna do through the four quarters. Um, you know, if it's just the final, if it's just the final draft of stuff, I, I don't see a huge problem with that. Um, and if it ends up dragging it out a couple months at the end, it's not a big deal. Um, but I, I would like the working groups to be able to be more responsive to feedback from the town board throughout the process. Um, so that's my concern with having the working group report to the planning group who reviews things and then decides whether or not to send it to the town board. Yep. And then the town board decides whether or not to send it to the planning board and CAC. I think having the working group send it directly to the planning board and the CAC. Uh, yeah, I, I, so I agree. I like that idea, David. I, I'm, 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 I think that's the most expedient way to do it. It seems like the, you know, the, the way we get the input from the CAC, which is and the planning board, which is what I want. Um, you know, I'm not really sure what the timing is, but there could be a potential that you know we're sort of a month out of sync, but at least you won't be three months out of sync. Yeah. 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 So, so I like your proposal. Thanks. David, do you um, do you set up the you know, what you call the assignments uh, based on your schedule? That you have um, your you know, your way you set up your your scheduling for the next few months, and do they do, do um, and where do the working groups begin from on the assignments? That's a great question. So um, I think we've been driving the working group. You know, the working groups were already working um, but going forward I think this the schedule that we um, made with the moratorium is really driving the conservation group um, that schedule doesn't apply to the Hamlet group although I'm going to try to keep them kind of on the same uh, the same wavelength uh, I've concentrated a little extra on making sure that the conservation group or the um, the group that's working on the low density residential zoning is really moving that forward since that's what's tied to the moratorium. Um, and I think, you know, there are other things that we, I think we want, I would love to have everything done and adopted as one document at the end of December. Um, but if there are things that need to wait a little bit longer, um, then, you know, it's the, it's the, other, the other things that aren't affected by the moratorium that aren't on quite as um, necessary of a track. So I basically worked backwards from the adoption in December 
um, to figure out what needs to be done each month. So with the zones identified, what we'll be working on in May and June are um, nailing down the, the actual requirements for each of those zones. Um, we're meeting twice a month, so that's four meetings, um, which I, I, it'll be, again, it's quick, but I think we can get through it. And I feel like I have the trust of the people who've been showing up to the committee um, that, you know, I think one of the comments at the last meeting was, you know, we might not all agree on this, but we should just get David to tell us what it is and then we can talk about, you know, messing around on the edges. So um, I'm, I'm glad that there's, that there's that trust. I think that some of, amount of that is necessary for moving something along this fast. Um, but that's the next step is having the list of the parameters for each of the zones. Um, by the end of June, uh, so that that can be presented to the town board um, in July. And then the rest of July is time for review and comment on that by all of the various boards. Um, so that in August, the planning board, or, sorry, the town board can get that feedback from the CAC and the planning board and other community groups, um, the Ag Committee and anyone else in the community um, so that they can get back with me and the, the working group and tell us what needs to change um, in August and the next the next three months. Thanks. Yeah. Are there are other questions, Sarah, Leslie? Uh, I'm thinking. Um, I was mostly wondering, do you have, do you know what type of form the comments will come? Like, is it going to be individuals on the board or, or do you think we should leave that up to the board, uh, each individual board, how they want to pass on their comments? Because yeah. I, I would imagine that individuals on the boards might not agree on certain things, so. Sure. I think that's likely. I think you will probably get some very long emails. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> and lots of public comment. Um, I, I do think that is a question of do the boards want to work through an official response, um, you know, that they vote on and that everyone agrees is the, the CAC response um, or do members of the CAC want to send different letters? Um, of course, you know, the whole point of this whole structure is that everyone in the town board is empowered to participate and share um, their feedback with the town board. So anyone can do that. Um, and the other thing is that we're, we're really encouraging those board members to participate in the working group so that they're driving it and not just responding to it. But, you know, there's, there's different venues for the different amounts of time and engagement that people have. Um, maybe, I mean, I know encouraging people to, to like say from the CAC or the planning board to attend, um, the working groups, uh, I mean, that's, we're talking, I mean, that's a bunch of more meetings and I'm, I'm wondering if we couldn't sort of encourage or harass people to come to this, the extra town board meeting, mm -hmm. um, would just be one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a, a good point. And, and you would essentially be Bruce serving the function that the planning group had before. Like I heard from Bruce. Bruce, mm -hmm. Bruce is here. Um, yeah, he's here. That's that was the way that he was participating. Is he wasn't going to go to all of the working groups, but the right. planning group is where you can hear what they're all working on, and right. um, you know see the drafts and respond. So. I don't think that I don't think it's a big change to do that here instead of there, um, as as long as you know we're keeping the process open and the town board is open to yeah. having this be the venue for that. Right. So I mean, if we if if we're going to um, basically take that place in in. Uh, 
of, of the planning group in, in that process, we would have to allow more participation in our review than you know, just the board or, or you know, uh, having a set aside time for people to comment. Uh, and I'm, I'm certainly open to that as a, as a good way to engage in pe uh, those people, have, as you suggested, Leslie, from the planning board uh, and, and, and also and the the CAC. Yeah. That's true. who, you know, might not have time to go to all those meetings, but, but um, right. to participate with us uh, when we, um, when it comes back to the town board. So well, that's I like a good that idea, idea Joel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that idea. <laughs> hey, Matt, of course, I, I disagree. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I don't really want to see, I don't want to be part of that planning group and having to go through all that. I mean, I, my, my vision and my role is that we, I would help make yeah. decisions once things had gotten to the point that, you know, they needed to be made. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe I'm just being selfish with my own time. Um, I, I would I would prefer that the CAC and the planning board gave us a formal vote on how they felt about things moving forward, and they can certainly comment individually. Um, and if you wanted to disband the planning group at this point, maybe you could do that, and they, those people could respond individually in writing to David. Maybe the planning group, in fact, has morphed into the working groups and that's sufficient to move us forward. Well, I mean, I'm not, I, I, I think disbanding is probably a little bit too strong a word, but in effect, it would be suspending its full meetings. Uh, if, if the way the way that um, David and, and I have, have proposed moving forward so that, uh, but there's still the overall structure. I mean, I'm still sharing the process um, and I have the ability to create additional working groups if, as as needed. And in fact, we have one that's warming right now with the, uh, there's a group of people who are interested in, in focusing specifically on agriculture. And I've, I've encouraged them to get to do that so that we can have that agricultural perspective added to the, the mix. The focus here, as David said, is kind of on the conservation group because the moratorium specifically applies to the low density zone and when the work of that group is to from from a year ago it was to identify priority conservation areas and then it sort of broadened out to um, deciding not deciding but proposing how to divide up basically the the low density zone into into sub zones for various purposes you know how distinguishing uh, they, they want to well, currently sort of a monochromatic zone into its distinguishing features and to propose the, where those zones would be and what they would be about and what the regulations would be that would apply to each is the overall task of that group. But that uh, also is informed by what's going to happen in the hamlet um, zone because they, they interface around the edge, edge of the hamlets. And also you know, for this agricultural group, the how the regulations are structured and where an agricultural zone or zones are created, uh, what kind of regulations there are, are in them are all part of the, what's going to come out of that conservation working group. And, and to have a group specifically focused on agriculture um, is, is a helpful thing. It could be just as easily uh, a group focused on the priority conservation areas. And the CAC, some CAC members who have participated have that particular expertise and interest. And um, it's been very helpful having Jonathan just for instance, be um, engaged it in, in that process. So, but the CSC as a whole hasn't been, hasn't been, you know, has, has as Claire put it, has enough other things to do um, that they don't want to, you know, some of them have chosen not to, to, to jump in at the working group level. I mean, my point simply being that the, the overall structure is kind of driven by, by, by David and, and me, um, in, in terms of you know expanding working groups and and, and assigning um, tasks. And and I'm more than happy to be planning czar with David to move this along. 
in, in the accelerated framework that we've, that we've set ourselves to. So what, um, what, 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 what falls out here is, is, the, is the planning group getting together as a group and reviewing the, the, what comes out of the working groups, however many of them there are. That, that had been done, it was essentially a, a pre-screen before going to the town board. So, you know, because something comes out of a working group, you're sort of, you're, you're sort of uh, proofing it before the larger group, which has a, a wider representation of interests to ensure that it reflects a, uh, a broadly supported uh, uh, suggestion or, or proposal before sending it on to the town board. Uh, we don't really have the luxury, I don't think, to, to do it that way if we're going to get through the, the, the range of proposals that we need to by the end of the year. So this, this, this abbreviated procedure is suggested, but um, the downside is that uh, it will be less polished coming to us because it will be, will be, it'll be coming to us at the same time it goes to the CAC and the planning board. Uh, and unless, um, well, I mean, Matt, it's not, it sounded like what you were suggesting is that you want them to go to the CAC and planning board before it came to the town board so that you had, so, so that you had their feedback on it before, before we took it up at all. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's what you're hearing. And, and, you know, I think that <clears throat> your proposed, you know, new flow addresses that it's just that you may be a month out of sync depending on how meetings sit. I think that what you've proposed is, is a workable, um, you know, I think it's a good way to do it. I, I'm hoping that, um, you know, we, we hired David because he's got expertise in this and yeah. I have a lot of um, respect for his work and, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that what we see at the town board level is, is you know, fairly polished because, um, you know, I, at, at some level, I think I trust him to move this process forward in a way that he's heard the town wants to move forward in, in the appropriate language. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm comfortable with this new process. I, I think it's fine. Um, but I do want to hear from, as I said, from planning board and, and CAC, and they could simply say, you know, we don't have a consensus or the time to do this, but I want them to have the ability to, to weigh in or not weigh in. Mm -hmm. Great, that's really useful feedback. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. yeah. Does everybody else agree that that's a good, that's a worthwhile um, delay, basically, between coming out of working group and before comes to us that the, that the planning board and CAC have a chance to review it and make their suggestions before we take it up. I, uh, I'm mostly, <laughs> she, is Leslie saying something? No, she's just nodding. You know, go ahead. Uh, um, I, I mostly agree. I just don't want to limit um, any of the groups. I don't, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't want proposals to only be able to come from the working groups if that makes any sense like mm -hmm. if if i assume the planning board is going to have a lot more time the cac may have their hands full still but since the moratorium is i would assume that the um, mm -hmm. planning board um, agendas are probably getting a little slimmer or will soon at least and they haven't yet but they, if might, they have they might. <laughs> yeah if they have extra time i don't want to limit it where the planning board couldn't choose to take up some topic i don't know i would leave that up to david to decide how that could to make sure that the two groups aren't in uh working against each other but D david and i spoke about this because i anticipated it might be a question of how i asked the question how would we integrate um, the planning board into the process if they were willing to spend more time on it. And, um, and David has some good thoughts about it. So maybe if you could share those. Sure, yeah. Um, so of course, just like everyone else, the planning board members have been invited to the working group and I'd love to have them there. Um, but we discussed what could be useful to do in planning board meetings in those circumstances, um, like Sarah mentioned, where we, we are trying to get their agendas lighter. 
Um, as Joel said, this month isn't really, um, but you know, I hope we will with you know less subdivisions that they'll have more time. Um, some of the agendas have been mostly subdivisions so far in my time here, so that's possible. And uh, my thought was that they are really experts in dealing with the details of the code, the process, the, um, the format, the definitions, um, those things where you can really utilize subject matter expertise and experience of having projects go through that. Um, that's the feedback that I think would be most useful from the planning board. Um, is how, how we make adjustments um, in those parts of the zoning that aren't um, just you know the lot sizes and the uses and uh, what's allowed and what's not allowed. I think that those other questions about kind of the, the long-term goals of the town make sense to happen in the forum that has more com community participation that invites everyone um, but I think that we can really utilize the planning board to hone in on some issues with the process and with the details of how the code works and how it's administered. So and that also, may jive with the fact, uh, that also may jive with the fact that they won't, they don't have time this month and they probably won't have much of a lighter agenda next month. Um, so those are also things that can happen a little bit later in the process. Thanks, David. Uh, Tim, we certainly have the ability to send things back to them too, if we want them to. Oh yeah. Do more. Right. Sounds good. Okay, so then the, uh, let's see. So that's the first part of it. Um, more on the, uh, the scope and the timeline. You're going to pick up from here, right? Sure, I can. I mean, we've we we're hitting it all kind of. It's all kind of coming together as the same thing, but that's okay. I'm going to put the timeline back up. So, here we go. So where we are with the timeline. We're in April. Um, I've highlighted what's uh, kind of been done. So we are currently right on schedule, not behind yet. Um, <laughs> we, we are, we're actually, I think a little bit ahead with the Hamlet group. Um, they had already identified zones and even identified land area for those zones before you hired me. Um, so they, they have done some dealing with that and they have started reviewing some kind of draft ideas for what the zone rules would be. Um, the conservation group that's dealing with the low density residential area has also reviewed a, a couple of preliminary ideas for rules for different zones. Um, and then I think we backtracked a little bit to make sure that we're all on the same page about what the, what the um, palette of zones that we need is. And where we ended up with that uh, on Friday is that we're proposing a large lot zone, one very large lot zone um, that it would include uh, publicly held um, lands like the Danby State Forest and uh, Dotson Park and other things that are owned by the state, um, as well as uh, areas that people in the community want to put into it. Um, so there was a lot of conversation that, you know, some people and their neighbors agree that they don't wanna see development in their area. And if they wanna put their lot into a large lot conservation zone, zone yeah. out, awesome. Um, so, so that's, that's also an option. Uh, the next zone is a high priority preservation zone. Um, so this is areas where the town really wants to impose strict requirements to protect uh, key environmental assets. Um, some of those are UNAs, um, 
but they could also be the other things, uh, places that are really important to the town to preserve. Um, then there's a medium priority zone um, that's a little bit more flexible, includes um, things like farms and forests. It's places that we do uh, still want to keep um, a rural feel, but it's maybe not important to completely preserve them exactly the way they are. Um, and then, and I think we're still settling on names, but a, a low priority zone or a neighborhood zone or a suburban neighborhood zone, um, basically an area uh, where we're not proposing a lot of substantial changes in the, the rules. And that would generally be focused on um, areas that have clusters of lots that are already built out. Um, and then on top of that, we discussed um, a riparian and habitat corridor overlay um, that would protect some pieces of parcels that are either within 100 feet of um, year-round streams or 50 feet of intermittent streams or identified uh, habitat um, wildlife migration corridors. Migration might not be the right word, but um, areas that are, they're mostly along uh, rivers and in UNAs. So they already have some protection, but there are some identified that need a little bit of extra protection. And this would be something would, that would go on top of one of those underlying zones. So I, I think that the that both of those groups have, have made approximately the level of progress we wanna see at this point in time. David, um, how, how detailed are these zones going to be? Um, they're basically they're generalized zones now, but how far are they going to take it down to um, you know, property boundaries or what can be on the land or just, you know, just sort of give me an idea of what, what, how detailed the zones will be? Yeah, so right now they're not very detailed at all. Um, we've started with some mapping, and this is actually how we got to um, iterate a couple times on this concept as we started with a conversation about what should be preserved and how we would delineate what that was. Then I went back uh, to the office and GIS and started trying to delineate that and found, you know, gosh, some of the things that sounded conceptually good don't really work out on the ground with the data. It's not always... Um, as cut and dry as you know the conceptual conversation sounds like. So we got to come back this week or last week and reiterate on that. Um, and I've started the process of um, kind of mapping out where these different zones can be. Um, I started at the two ends, um, the areas that are already built out, identifying those, um, and then the areas that I think there's strong consensus that we definitely want to um, preserve as completely as possible. And then we kind of work in from there, um, you know, beneath the most important conservation, what are areas that we want to impose pretty strict rules on and below that areas that we want to keep rural, but where we want some more flexibility. And I think there's going to, there's going to be a lot of back and forth on that. And, you know, we may end up changing individual parcels at some point. Um, uh, but that's really the, I think some of that will come out further down in quarter three, um, really getting the rules for each zone. That's the plan for May and June. So getting agreement on things like lot sizes, what are the allowed uses, what are the setbacks. Um, we've done a lot of talking about clustering and different ways that that can be accommodated in the different zones, depending on what our priorities are for that zone. For example, you know, in an area that's we're trying to keep rural and it's mostly forested, um, you might want uh, building sited in a way that makes them less visible from the street. Whereas if you're looking at a field area, you want to get the buildings as close to the edge of that or near the street so that they're, they're not impinging on the field because that's what you're trying to preserve. So I, I think working through the details of exactly how people um, want to interpret and, and lay that out is what we'll do in the next eight meetings in uh, May and June uh, of those two groups uh, so that we can have something, um, a readable draft that 
will come to everyone in July. So it will be a draft of rules and a draft of the map um, that, that's a starting place. And I think it's good to have both of those so early on so that you have um, you know, five months to work through any of the stickier details. Not mentioned here, but also, but an important consideration is going to cut across in a way is the what came to light with our um, issue with in um, Deputian Hollow, which is the road question. We have at the moment only one road spec, and it's the heavy duty public road, you know, 20 foot paved with shoulders and ditches. And I was talking to Guy about this earlier today. The, the environmental impact of that in terms of the, well, the environmental impact of that is, is fairly substantial. And we might want to, in the interest of preserving, uh, you know, minimizing the fragmentation of the environment and the, and the impacts of, on, on, on um, runoff, uh, to, to minimize the, the, the road specs uh, and, and driveway specs um, so that they're adequate for, for, for emergency vehicle access, but not, um, but not, uh, you know, more than that. And that would require coming up a whole different set of specs and um, then determining, you know, and under what situations one would, would, would use them. You know, we had the, the ODA is something we have only just learned of, you know, what should, be its appropriate use going forward. And I, the reason I had a conversation with Guy about this because I asked him, you know, what about shared driveways, which would reduce the impact of everybody having their own driveways, particularly for your clustering your back end, because of that requirement in the, in the state law that you have to have frontage on a town road suitably improved in order to draw a building permit. Um, could you have a shared drive? And he, he uh, he, he, he told me that you can have you can have joint ownership of roads, which I didn't realize this is new to me now as of today. Um, so that we could private roads could be uh, created where uh, multiple lots could be accessed via these private roads and the private roads would be jointly owned by the lots that but but you know that, that uh, access um, the already existing roads through them. So all this needs to be thought about and, and because it will open up uh, different ways for people to take advantage of, I guess say we need different, way, different ways to, to execute or implement the kind of development that they're entitled to. You know, our, our historical pattern has been to, to limit, well, we haven't really limited, we, we've limited development of the interior effectively by saying you have to have a road or and, and the road specs are so onerous that that uh, nobody would want to for the kind of entitlement that they've got go to that expense and nobody who owns land very few people who own land in Danby would have the, the deep enough pockets to do that so what's happened is we've got we've got lots developed along the frontage and some people have chosen to buy fairly substantial chunks of land and they build long driveways, but um, that's limited in because it in itself is expensive, especially with the new state requirements for, for emergency vehicle access year round. So that has kind of limited the back acreage development. And if we, if we create it, if, if we make it easier and cheaper to do uh, private roads instead of public roads and share driveways um, will be giving ourselves flexibility to locate the houses where they are have less of an impact on the environment but it will also probably also mean that m more of them are apt to be farther back from the road so we should think about what that the implications of that and uh, under what whether we can sort of mitigate what might be an undesirable fragmentation of the environment that might follow from that. 
So we've had, you know, we talked about some of this stuff, but there's a lot more to there's a lot more to work through. So um, let's see. That just about covers everything that I had um, to bring up. That's it's, pretty much what I wanted to hear, Joel. Thank you. That, that's very, thanks, David. Yeah, um, I do have a few um, feedback cards that I don't know if the if the town board would like me to share them or I can just email them. Um, there's only I think three or four that really say much of anything, but I I don't. I think I told you all, I made a, a form on the town's website that people can comment at any time, um, as well as getting their email addresses. So I have lots of comments that say, you know, add me to the list. Um, that's not really worth sharing, but there's a few that I thought would. Um, people looking forward to learning from and following how these updates play out in uh, Danby, oh, from, from the town of Newfield Planning Board, thanks. Uh, <laughs> Looking forward to getting involved with the <laughs> zoning. Um, I watched the video kickoff meeting and just want to thank David, Joel, and everyone who's actively engaged in and leading the process. Oh. I'm new to the town and very much appreciate the inclusive and transparent approach to these very important topics. Thank you, and I hope to participate in some meetings going forward. I want to get involved in working groups. Um, I'm interested in the process for revising codes. A water availability should definitely be considered. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. The others are just make sure I'm on the list. Um, but I, I'll keep bringing those to you as, as they come in and having a way for people to um, react and respond wherever they're at at any time. Thanks. And I'm glad we can have a short meeting for once. Yeah. Um, Wednesdays may not be all that long either. I mean, we have a relatively brief agenda compared to the previous meeting. So is there anything from the board that I should bring back to the working groups? I know, you know, we're kind of at the beginning. You haven't heard a whole lot yet, but if you have anything you want me to bring back to them, you can also email. Just, just our thanks for the work that they're doing and understand that they're going to be under some pressure to you know, crank some stuff out um, during the next couple months. Great, thanks, Matt. Okay, well, uh, I'm not unhappy to have a relatively brief meeting. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Um, and of course, we'll see each other soon. <laughs> Yep. It's still light out. You can do some yard work still. Oh, uh, yeah. I got about 10 minutes before it gets too dark to see. <laughs> <laughs> Headlamp. Yeah, Headlamp. right. <laughs> Headlamp, right. <laughs> I did get out there for an hour. <laughs> so, yeah. You, know. <laughs> okay. you have to pace yourself. Pace yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks, David. All right. Thanks, David.